Okay, so we are still busy looking at basis and dimension. So we've seen that a basis is a set that's linearly independent and generates a vector space, and we also have for any vector space V, all its basis is have the same number of elements. Um, we saw that in the previous video. So that you can define the dimension of the vector space as the number of elements in any of its spaces. Okay, now we have an example. Let P2x be the vector space of all polynomials in x of degree 2 or less. So that's things like polynomials like ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are any real numbers, and a, b, and c could also be zero. So this includes polynomials like 3x plus 1, okay, because that's of degree 2 or less, it's less, this is only of degree 1, where the, in this one the a is 0, the b is 3, and the c is 1, okay. What is the dimension of P2x? We know from an early example that the set x squared, x, 1, is linearly independent. It's easy to show that it generates P2x and is hence a basis. How do you show that it generates P2x? Well, we want to express anything of any thing, any polynomial of degree 2 or less, or anything of like ax squared plus bx plus c, as a linear combination of x squared, x, and 1. But it actually already is a, such a thing, right? It's a times x squared plus b times x plus c. So clearly, this the, clearly this set generates P2. Now this set, so it's linearly independent and it generates P2, so it's a basis. It contains three elements, so this base is three-dimensional. Okay, so instead of polynomials of degree two or less, is a three-dimensional vector space. Of course, it's a subspace of the of the of the vector space of functions from reals to reals, right? which is infinite dimensional. Ooh, next up, what is the dimension of the subspace S of R3 described below? So here's a subspace. All those x, y, z such that x minus 2, y plus 5, z equals 0. Okay. So we have a Cartesian equation. What we would like now is rather a vector equation. I mean, you know, I think you might know that this is a Cartesian equation for a plane. We want a vector equation for a plane now. We recast the expression that defines S from Cartesian to vector form. Note that 2, 1, 0 and 0, 5, 2 are two non-collinear vectors that lie in the plane. So those are just found by inspection. You just so you, you want to try and get x, you want to try and get vectors that satisfy this equation. So 2 minus 2, so 2 x equals 2, y equals 1, that's 0, and then if you let the z be 0, you have something that satisfies the equation. Or if you have 5 and 2 for y and z, and nothing for 0, then 0 for x, then that also gives you a vector that satisfies the equation, and it's clear that they are not collinear, that they are not scalar multiples of each other, so they are... So they... Okay. So they are independent. Okay. So we have two non-collinear vectors that lie in the plane. Now, so then that means that... That means that this set S is actually the linear combination of... of of those linear, every linear combination of those two vectors. Hmm. Now, hmm. now for me that seems to be begging the question because how do you know that there isn't a third that you don't need a third vector to? How do you know that this generates the whole of S? Let's see if that's answered. Well. A natural choice for the basis of S then is the set two one zero zero five two. You should show that B is linearly independent and that and that B generates S. And the, this basis has two elements, so the plane is two dimension a two dimensional subspace of R three. Okay. So let's let's do this. Let's show that B is linearly independent and that B generates S. Okay. So to show that B is linearly independent, that's 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 basically done already. That's trivial. These two vectors are not multiple, scalar multiples of each other, so n neither vector is dependent on linearly dependent on the other vector. So that set is linearly independent. 
How about now we need to show that it spans S. Okay. So how can we do that? How about like this? So if we take a vector that lies in S, we could choose anything for Y, we could choose anything for Z, but then X is given by the Cartesian equation in terms of Y and Z, right? So I could say that S is all those vectors of the form. Let me choose. Let me choose. Um, let me choose uh, C for Z, B for Y, and that means that X will be 2B minus 5C, right? Okay. And B and C are any real numbers. Okay. I want to somehow get this to become a linear combination of this vector and this vector. Okay. Well, I can see how I'm good, how, to, how I can get the two one zero. So what I mean is, I could split this thing up, right? I could have this vector two b minus five c. It's gonna be like I have like two b b zero minus five c, and then I have a, a zero here and a C there, right? Those vectors are the same. And now I could factorize out the two... I could factorize out, sorry, the, the B. So I have this as B, 2, 1, 0. And then I could have plus C, minus 5, 0, 1. OK. Hmm. So that certainly got one of those vectors in it, but not the other one. I want the vector 0, 5, 2, rather. Let me think. How can we get that vector? How can we rather have that vector 0, 5, 2? Oh, I see. OK. Well, we have this thing in the form. The form we have this, these two vectors we've suggested, since there's a zero here and a zero here, let me rather make, let me rather make x and z the free variables. Okay, let's try that. So, Ooh, sorry. So let's have this thing is everything in the form. Well, x could be anything, z could be anything, but then y is determined. What would y, what is y then in terms of x and z? Um, in fact, you know, we're gonna have we're gonna have a two here and a two here, you know. So no, never mind that. The Cartesian equation gives me two y oh sorry. Gives me the Cartesian equation, I solve that for y I have two y equals x plus five z, right? So in other words, y is a half x plus 5z, and there's the x, and there's the z. Okay. x, mm. x, so there's x is z in R. Okay. So those two sets are definitely equal to each other. Um, now I want to try and get to these vectors 2, 1, 0, and 0, 5, 2. So I can split up this thing, and we could have x times 1, a half, 0, plus z times 0, 5 over 2, 1. OK, where x and z are real numbers. OK, but of course, x and z are any real numbers, so you can take in that factor of a half into them. That's fine. So I can re-express this as alpha 2, 1, 0, plus, so now you know, alpha is, I'm basically saying that 
that um, that alpha is a half x. Beta, I think beta is a half z. Zero, five, two. Where alpha and beta are any real numbers. So now I've expressed, I've shown how this set is actually nothing but every linear combination of two one zero and zero five two. So nothing but every linear combination of those two basis vectors. 2, 1, 0, 0, 5, 2. So it's that, the set generated by those two basis vectors. We already showed that it's linearly independent by noting that those two vectors are not scalar multiples, are not scalar multiples of each other. So now we know that the basis for a, a basis for this plane is these two vectors, and so the plane is two-dimensional, a two-dimensional subspace of R3. OK, how do I know it's a subspace? Of course, it's a subspace because anything like this, any set generated by some vectors is a subspace because it's closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication because it is just a set of linear combinations. OK. Shall I leave it there for now? Yes. I'll finish this section in the next video.